Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and tonight we have a fun Clay Share Live plan for you. We're gonna be showing you how to use marvelous molds in clay to create amazing texture. So I just wanna thank you all for having patience for us being a few minutes late tonight. Um, but we're here now, so we're gonna just roll with it. So if you're not familiar with Marvelous Molds, um, they're a really amazing company and they make these silicone fondant molds. And I'll just show you an image from one of their products. So they're really meant for cake decorating. And when I found these a few years ago, gosh, I think it's maybe four or so years ago, I found this company. Um, I was looking for texture that had uh, knit pattern in it. So I wanted to create a sweater, wetter, sweater <laughs> mugs <laughs> on my own. And I couldn't find any texture out there that was good quality. And then I found Marvelous Molds. And they have a whole line of knit Simpress that they do. And they've got this Trinity. They have a, a rib and cable knit. They have a braided. Um, and then they also have these really great buttons and embellishments. So I got some of these and started using them to make sweater mugs and other things. And it was, it was just like amazing. And they, they give such great texture. Um, and so then I reached out to Marvelous Molds to see if they'd be interested in working with Clayshare and they were. So a beautiful partnership was born. And so I've been working with Marvelous Molds now for a few years and I, I love them. And I just wanted to feature them tonight. Um, I am gonna be giving away a few goodies from my personal stash in prime time to premium members. So I got a couple Marvelous Mold things that are gonna be heading out to some lucky winner. But tonight, um, we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna use this new V-Pedal Ruffle. So that's this one here and it's brand new. And I'm gonna talk about, uh, if you've never used these before, how to use them and some tips to get really great texture and to succeed with them. Cause I know it can be frustrating when you first start using something that's new to you. All right, so you're here. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you guys are here. And so you've used Marvelous Molds for cakes and you just found them online right today for pottery i know so marvelous molds those of you who come from the baking world will be familiar with them and i love them because they have the 3d texture and they are just so great all right so let me show you a few things i made with some marvelous molds and i think we'll, we'll zoom in so you guys can can see it better but here's a sweater mug that i made uh, a few years ago now and you can see this texture right here. Now, it's this cable and rib texture, this one right here. And then for the buttons, I used these guys right here, these little button molds. And so that's how I made this. Now, actually the inspiration for my own sweater weather rolling pin was Marvelous Molds because I love the molds. I think they're great. But as you can see, they're a little limiting size-wise, although you can move them and press them into clay and they work, but it, it's nicer to have sometimes a bigger swath of texture. And of course my pattern's different than this. So it's just something to think about, but that's how I made this mug. And in my sweater mug tutorial, we use the Marvelous Molds. So if you want more, we're not gonna make a sweater mug tonight, but if you wanna know how to make the, something like this, check out the sweater mug tutorial. So there's one I made with it. And then I don't have a lot of pieces that I've made with Marvelous Molds that aren't sold. So they just kind of, you know, I make pieces, they sell and I don't have them anymore. But here is the planter class. And in it, I used my floral batik rolling pin for the background. But this right here is a Marvelous Mold, this little bumpy right here. And so this is an like an applique. I made the whole piece and then I attached these right here and uh, did a little contrasting glaze action on that to get this fabulous piece. So this is one of our classes on clay share and it's really fun. And I combined the Marvelous Molds with the textured rolling pins. So it's a nice way to use different companies' textures because you can always layer them on. You're not limited at all. You're never limited. You can always use different people's textures together. They're so great. All right, so let's, let's get in it. Um, oh yeah, this is, this is, so this is my, this is my sweater weather rolling pin pattern. 
So you can see what my rolling pin looks like. And here's Marvelous Molds. I told you it was inspired by it, didn't I? So this is the rolling pin and this is Marvelous Molds. So they're very similar, but um, you know, Marvelous Molds has a lot more knit textures than, than I do. So just a good, good option. We do have a Marvelous Molds doing a discount too. I think you get 15% off and Kevin will get that code up for you guys. All right, so here I have this V petal ruffle. And if I show you one of the molds when they're new, you'll see, I think this can kind of show it, that there's this ridge right here. See that? Now, if we roll clay into this, this is gonna cut into our clay slab, and then we're only gonna end up with a piece of clay about this big. And that's not great, that's not what we want. We wanna be able to make a bigger slab than this. So what I do, and what I've done here on this one already, is I cut, and you can see it's a little uneven, because it's home cut. I cut that little ridge off, and then that way it doesn't cut into the clay. And that's, that's what we're gonna do tonight. So, um, so the most up-to-date coupon code we have is CS2022. So that's clay share for CS2022. And that's 15% off your entire order at MarvelousMolds.com. So you go to their website, and that's the, the deal that they have right now. So we're going to cut into these, and I know it can be a little daunting because you buy your molds, and you're like, ah, oh, now i got to cut it apart. But you got to cut it. you got to cut it. Unless you only want to make, like, trivets or little tiny plates, which you can completely. But I want to do something. And so I waited. I was going to cut this one off camera. But I said, no, 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 we'll do it on camera. And uh, we can go to the overhead, I guess. We'll, we'll switch to the overhead so um, the folks at home can see a little better. Because we're going to just, we're going to cut it. It's happening. So just take your scissors, be brave, and just cut. Um, so I really just want to take that ridge off. And I don't want to take anything else, so I'm just going to follow that ridge all the way down and just cut it off. And they actually cut super easy. But it's just, you know, just like everything, it's time consuming, right? We've got to do these little things to be able to get our textures and things ready so we can use them. So this is the kind of thing you can do beforehand. So I cut one side off. Oh, I can't believe it. She cut it. Yes, you're going to cut it. And like here's a little raised area. I want to cut that down too. I'm just going to take those out. And I didn't do it beforehand because I wanted you to see it happen. Uh, a lot of times I'll prep things before and I'll trim them out. And then I get a lot of emails and messages from folks saying, uh, I got my mold and it doesn't look like yours, even though I explain it, but it's not the same as seeing it, right? It's not the same as actually seeing it get cut. So we're going to cut it. And if you're afraid of cutting it, just baby steps. Cut a little bit and see how it is and cut a little more because you got to get this off if you're going to get your texture to be bigger. So I'm going to cut that off. If I had two of these, I would have cut one up beforehand and uh, had it ready to go. But I, I, I don't have two of them. So we're going to do it in real time, everyone. So while I'm doing this, we'll, we'll talk about, um, you know, when you're using these molds, you're going to want to think about a release agent. Now, once you've used these a few times, they'll release because the clay... You can kind of see, see how they get a little dusty looking? That's because some clay has settled in there and it basically now releases all by itself. But when you first get it, what's gonna happen is it's new and it's really sticky and clay is kind of sticky. So you get these two sticky things going together and they, they stick as one would expect, right? So you can use a couple things as a release. Some folks like to use cornstarch which I like cornstarch too. Works really nice for lots and lots of things. Or you can get yourself some nonstick cooking spray like this. Any brand will do, doesn't matter. It can be olive oil, it can be canola oil um, spray, but anything like that will work as a release agent. And you can spray it inside the mold for the first few times of using it because it's gonna try to be sticky. 
Uh, the benefit I think cornstarch has over the spray is the spray itself kind of has a stickiness and does tend to leave behind a residue. So that's going to be a decision you're going to have to make on your end as to what you want to use. All right, so I cut it all up. Look it, I cut it. And we'll just go back in. So this is your bravery test when you get your marvelous molds is to cut them up. I know it's scary, but sometimes we have to take those leaps, right? And we got to take chances to make great things. That's good. I think I got most of it. I think I got it. You'll know pretty quick if you need to go back in and trim anything off. There. See, it got smaller. <laughs> I told you it would, but that's okay. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, these textures press really, really deep. So you're going to want to work with a slab of clay that um, is not, I wouldn't say thicker than normal, but not too thin. Um, this one right here is a little, you can go with thinner, this texture that I have. But this one here is a deep texture. So I have a slab I've rolled out. It's three eighths of an inch thick, which is pretty beefy, but that's okay. It's, it's all in the name of art. So we can have our, our beefy, beefy slabs. So I've got a board here. This happens to be one of the new JR Pottery Forms boards that I got. I'm going to flip it over and use it that way. And then I got my slab of clay over here. And you can use any clay you want with these molds. It's just the clay you like to use in your studio. Currently, I'm using Laguna B-Mix 5. And this is a slab I rolled out yesterday, but I've had it wrapped in plastic. So I don't know if you can see, it's still kind of sticky. So if you wrap them up, really well with plastic, they're going to stay sticky for a long time. So you're not going to run into any problems with them. All right, we're going to start with smoothing out our slab. Since I rolled it out on my slab roller, it does have a little canvas texture on it. I want to take care of that. We're going to just quickly smooth that away, prep it for the marvelous molds texture. Flip it over. It's funny because uh, they're famous for the piece I'm cutting off because when you're using fondant, it's actually a self slicer. Yeah, but not for clay, right? Clay and f I mean, I know it's funny, like that's what you want for fondant, but this isn't fondant, this is clay. And unless you, I mean, if we had giant sheets, marvelous molds, make me some um, 12 by, what do I need? At least 12 by 8. <laughs> giant sheets of, uh, of fondant molds or of silicone molds and, and you know, we're, we're in business. But like a nine by 12, right? Nine by 12 would be perfect. This in a nine by 12, we wouldn't have to cut our edge, but we have to cut our edge. Sad, but true. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the cornstarch method for this because I don't wanna get it all gummy. And you got two choices. You can cornstarch your clay and that's where you just take a brush. There's lots of ways of putting your cornstarch on your clay. You know, if you have, uh, some people have a shaker, they keep their cornstarch in. Some people have a little bag and they pounce it. Um, I just have a brush and a little dish. You can brush it on your clay or you can pounce it into the mold itself. Cornstarch is completely inert in your studio. It's not gonna hurt anything. So do not worry about like getting it on the clay. I've gotten it on clay and then re-wedged the clay up and used it for other things. I've put underglaze on top of cornstarch and it's been fine. Um, you can always just wipe it back with a damp sponge too if you're gonna put underglaze on it and you're worried about the transfer not taking or the underglaze color um, being resisted by the cornstarch. All right, so look at the difference in the color already. You can see that it's a little less shiny, a little less bright. Nine by 16, Catherine says is what we need. All right, folks, we need nine by 16s. All right, I'm just gonna start this in the middle. And some people like to lay their clay on the mold. I like to put the mold on the clay, just makes it a little easier. And then get yourself a rolling pin. It could be any rolling pin. Could even be a textured rolling pin because when we roll it, it's just rolling on the mold. And we're just gonna press this down in and we're gonna walk it along. And so we just rolling it in. And it releases, but 
<laughs> can I just can I just take that for you to see? <laughs> look, look at the texture. Holy cow. Wow. All right. And, but you're thinking, oh, no, that's all I have. Well, you know, you could just use this. And this is why we cut the sides, right? Because if we had those raised sides here, it would have cut it into a beautiful little square. I think it would make a fabulous trivet. And if you're going to make trivets and just trivets or just little small plates, then you don't have to go ahead and um, cut your edges. But that's not, that's not what I'm doing, right? I'm doing something else. I got, I got plans, you see. All right, so we're just going to line it up right next to it and we're going to walk it again and you'll notice see how here this side's a little taller that's because as we roll it it kind of stretches the clay moves the mold, the fondant mold moves a bit everything stretches a little bit and then peel it up i feel like there should be a drum roll happening or something because it's it's pretty amazing i am going to dust it again with cornstarch just want to make sure that it releases really well. And if you have something you like to use other than cornstarch for dusting, by all means, use it. I, I am not like endorsed by the cornstarch makers industry or anything, so it doesn't matter to me. I'll just roll this side over here. And so I'm trying to keep the rolling pin so that I'm not pressing down on the texture I've already rolled. And peel that up. Look at this. So, yep, we don't have a great big rolling pin, but can we still get a big swatch of pattern? Yeah, yeah, we can. All right, so now go make something. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> so you can make anything you want now with this. You've got this amazing texture. For me, the form that I always go to if I'm going to make something and it's a new texture for me, I usually do two things. I do a plate and I do a mug because those are the forms. They're different enough. We have a plate that's you know flat and then we have a mug that's rounded and it has some volume. So I'm going to grab my templates for making a, just a standard mug. And you guys have seen me make mugs so many times. You're probably rolling your eyes. But it's good because a mug is a nice thing to use for testing out glazes too. So four by 12 rectangle, simple, easy peasy. You know, you just go ahead and, and take some craft foam, cut it out and you're good to go. Easy to work with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and usually, I'm gonna use my Dolan 220S. You could use a Fettling knife, whatever you've got in your studio, but we're gonna cut the top now here's a thought. If you wanted to have a smooth band at the top, right? You could do that and you could put your mug up here. So you see how we have such a deep texture? Maybe you don't want that on the rim. Maybe you want the rim to be smoother, which when you think about it, for uh, something so deep as this, it might be hard to get a smooth rim. So yeah, let's go up, let's go up higher, right? So we're gonna start at the top and I'm actually gonna have enough, I can flip it over and get two. So the rim could be here and the rim can be there. So I can get two mugs and then the bottoms will be over here out of this amazing texture. So if you're new to Marvelous Molds, now you're sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, the possibilities. Just think how the glaze is gonna fill in and how it's gonna drip and catch. It's going to be amazing. Can get two mugs out of this totally. Yeah. Completely get two. Um, and then we'll have to do another one if we're going to do a plate. But I don't, I don't think we're going to have time to do a plate. It's a great texture. Yeah. So when I roll up the sweater mold, do I also roll from the bottom up? I do. Well, um, it depends. So with the sweater mold, I do roll to the side. Yeah. So this guy here, when I'm rolling this, I roll to the side. But again, it depends. You could try top to bottom and see what works better. I don't think there's a right, there's not a right or wrong. It's a what works for you. So there's one. And let's go ahead and make the second one. I'm gonna grab my cookie cutter for my base. So that four by 12 that we're making always 
works out perfectly for a four inch base, which is kind of nice. So we always know this is the tough part. Pick where your texture is going to line up on your bottom. So there's that bottom, and then I'll just do another one. And I'm going to do it so some of it is untextured. So there's our bottoms, right? And then we're going to turn this around. So anything you can make from a slab, anything at all out there, you could use this for your texture. Anything. So whether you want to make bowls, whether you want to make votives, which we're going to be making Halloween votives next in prime time with my premium members. We have our, our Halloween personalized Halloween votive class coming up at 615. So that's going to be fabulous. And that's when I'm giving away the marvelous mold prize that I've got from my personal stash and giving away one of the brand new pinstripe pumpkin rolling pins. I know. Awesome, right? Um, we could also turn these into planters, vases, whatever you want to do. The top could be the edge closest to you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You could turn it this way, Frank. Great idea, right? You could go here and this could be the top and you could get a texture going in a different direction. It's, it's one of those things that it's limitless. You know, you, you think about it and you think, oh, well, it's just this little silicone square, but the ways you can use it, I mean, you can press it into a thicker piece of clay and then you know, maybe roll out a thick slab, press it in, and that becomes your handle. And maybe put the texture on your handle. Lots of things you can do. So many things. Now, they're a little thicker, but not, not really. Like, it seems thicker, but we've pressed in deeper because we, we had to. So we're going to go ahead and quickly do a mug. Um, if I'm going too fast on the mug making, I do have a few goodness, many, <laughs> I say a few, a few dozen mug making tutorials on clay share. I should count how many I have. All right, we're going to use this rib because I don't know what I do with my red one. But there's a lot. And for those of you who are premium members, you get access to everything. Non-premium members, you can still download the app. And I have a bunch of free things you can go ahead and access and Watch. All right, so when you look at it from the bottom, you can see how deep, you can actually see how deep this texture is right here. See? I don't know if that's showing up on the camera, but you can see. I'll hold it up. See how deep the texture is on that? So it really, it went in there. And that's why we had to have the clay thicker. Because if it was too thin, you press that texture in, what's going to happen is it's going to either break through or when you start to shape your mug and fold it up and everything, it's going to crack. So we don't want that to happen. And just roll this one up. So we can make mugs out of these, but I think actually we'll just turn them into planters. Because I'm always making mugs. But I'm not always making planters. And I think this shape, could you see this pattern, this amazing texture? on a dark speckled clay with a white glaze because that's what I'm thinking of now. I used a light colored clay, but I could still do a beautiful celadon glaze on the entire piece and then on the rim something super drippy, right? And then it doesn't matter as far as the rim if you're going to think about, you know, functionality and someone putting their mouth to it. All right, so for the seam we have here, because we do have a seam at the front where the overlap happens, what I like to do is to take a, they're called color shapers, although now you can buy them and they're called clay shapers. And they're just this little silicone tip. A lot of, a lot of silicone products here I'm finding in ceramics, right? And we, you can get this one. It's a little, it's a little hard though. I like the more flexible soft ones. And my favorite one to use 
is this one that's just like the little point. It's like almost a, a pencil point. And then you take that and you just draw gently along your seam, smoothing out that join. And it basically blends it in. So there's one. We smooth that the seam. Let's smooth this seam. You're excited to see these glaze. Maybe the new Honey Flux combos I posted this week. Well, you know why I did those tests was because I was really wanting to find something that'll show off texture as a base layer and then would work well with accents of color, right? So those those test tiles, and I put those up on the Clayshare social media so you guys can check those out if you haven't seen them yet. But I used six glazes on top of Amico's Honey Flux to see how they would react with each other. And they all worked really nicely with texture. You know, it, it all depends on what you're going for, right? Here's my stamp. So we're just gonna stamp the bottom. So now it's signed. Don't have to worry about forgetting to sign our work. It's done. How long the, is the code good for? My, that's our standing code. It exists. Uh, we've had it since ClayshareCon. Um, I think there is a certain number of like purchases it can be used for, meaning like users. But I think it's a one-time code. Use it once and then if you buy something else, you need a different code. But for ClayShare, that code will be good. My understanding is it just the rest of the year. I'll find out for sure. If Marvelous Mold's hanging out, they'll tell us. All right, so I'm slipping and scoring everything. God, it, looks, it just looks yummy. I don't know. I really like that. All right, so we line this up. This is going to be so great. Uh, like a nice, drippy jewel tone. You know, with autumn here and we're all in the mood for fall you could do something like pumpkin spice latte inspired right something like a nutmeg or any of the amico chinos for my inside seam i just use a little craft brush to smooth that seam out and then on my bottom seam i'm just gonna drag this rib along and that's going to smooth this join out and then just a second we'll round it let's put the next one together so when i'm working what i will do is i'll roll out my slab of clay and say i'm going to make a bunch of mugs i'll roll my texture that i want in to the clay and then i will go ahead and cut all my little bodies all my mug bodies out and i'll roll them all up in cylinders and then I will cut all my bottoms out and then I'll slip and score everything. And then I will attach the cylinders that I've made to all my bottoms, just like I'm doing now. And then I will go back and I will at the same time round all the rims over. And it's just working in a series when you're making many, it's each step you do it at the same time. I don't make one mug through completion and then start another mug. It's, it's more efficient to make multiples. Okay, so we've got these. They're kind of lumpy, right? Kind of lumpy looking from the top. Need to, need to do something about that. So what I do is I have got a little, uh, I think it's a four inch terracotta pot. Either way, they're really inexpensive. Pick up a few different sizes, three, four, six inch terracotta pots and keep them in your studio. You can use plastic yogurt cups or cottage cheese cups. The plastic sometimes is sticky. The terracotta, since it's already made of clay, is porous. And we round off our little planter that we're making, right? I'm not gonna put handles on these. These are gonna be planters. So is there a way to get the texture onto the handle? Absolutely, you, you go ahead and you roll out a coil, flat, you know, Make it a little extra thick and then roll the texture onto the coil. It's going to take some practice to get the thickness you want, but 100% you can put texture like that on a handle. I mean, let's just do it. You know how it is. 
So this is not a handle I'm actually going to put on anything. We're just going to do a quick, give you an idea, right? Lots of textures. Yeah, if you go to the Marvelous Molds website, um, I'm going to tell you before you go, get a cup of tea, a notebook, and a pen. Because there's pages and pages and pages of textures. They have many different lines, and they're all so good. You're going to need a moment or two. All right, so you roll out your, your coil. This is probably going to end up being a little too fat, so I'm going to just kind of tamp it down. Not going to pull it because I don't want to introduce any moisture to it. So you're going to have to practice how thick it should be to start with before you put your texture on it. Let's start with this. Put the, the texture, line it up on here. And then we're just going to roll. I'm rolling side to side because I have it facing that way. So what do we have? Looks pretty good. Uh, maybe I do want to use it. So I would go in and I would cut just a bit to trim it on the sides. Tamp gently, just using my thumb on the sides to get rid of any sharp edges because you don't want that on a handle. Definitely don't want sharp edges. Stop it there. I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. It's got to join somewhere, right? And down here, just flatten it out here. And you could use your cookie cutter that I use the flower one and shape that. But what do you think? Could be a handle. Um, another step you could take is a damp sponge. And you can just gently, your hands dry on the back where the texture is. So you're not going to actually damage the texture. You know I'm going to have to make one of these a, mugs a mug now. You know that. You guys did this. <laughs> one planter, one mug. That's where we're going to end up being. Um, yeah, look at that. How cool, right? Um, let's, this one's the closest. We're just going to go with that. Doesn't really matter. There's six one, half a dozen the other. I am going to grab my cookie cutter now. <laughs> I'm not making a mug. She makes a mug. That's, that's how it always goes, though, right? It's like, ah, I'm not going to make a mug. Yep, I'm going to make a mug. Let me get that cutter, and we'll go ahead and uh, make the handle. So uh, the texture I used, because it was the, the petal, but you don't have to use the petal texture. You could use any texture you want. I should have gotten a bigger flower. I might go grab a bigger one for that end, because look at that. How cute. It's a little mermaid tail. It has a mermaid doesn't it have like this kind of mermaid feel to it? Hmm. I know. It's very cute. It kind of looks like a lobster tail is what it is. The articulation of it, it's definitely uh, under the sea vibe going. So I got a whole bunch of these flower cookie cutters. When I buy cookie cutters, I'll buy like a set and they'll have all kinds of sizes in there so that if I want to make fatter handles, like for a pitcher or a basket or another big thing, I can. All right, so the handle that I wasn't going to make on the mug I wasn't going to make. You guys made me do it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not upset. I do not mind. Uh, no, this one's not getting volume. I, I really want to do... I. I mean, we could, hmm, stop it. See, that's not helpful. Can't believe you're not adding volume, Jess. And then I start thinking, oh, maybe I need to add some volume. No, we're going to leave it. <laughs> <We're> gonna... <laughs> you love the handle, Catherine. Yay. Dawn six pins shipped. You will get them Friday. Bring on the mug and platter making. Oh, I'm excited for you. Um, we've been packing and shipping pins like crazy. 
uh, oh my gosh, today was a record day of packing and shipping. Um, 55501, I think. Is that where we are? 55501, is that? 55504. It was somewhere in there. Um, but we're at 3 in the afternoon on the 29th of June. So those are the folks that ordered. Um, depending on the time of day you ordered, you know, that's, that's where we're at. 3.05 on the 29th of June. I mean, it was only a thousand, how many thousands of rolling pins? What did I do? How many did we do? We can't even count. 5,000? Too many. All right, that's going to go there. So I'm going to slip and score. Are you on the side? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to slip and score. Normally, I like to let my mug sit up a little bit. Uh, because it's still really soft. We just rolled texture in it, which softens it a bit, and then we started shaping it a bit. So if, even if the clay was a little stiff, all of these things being done to it softens it up a bit more. So um, when you put your handles on, you want the mug bodies to be soft enough so they, you know, will take the handle, but not so soft that they are easily warped. This one here is a bit, okay, the handle's a bit chunky, I'm just going to say. But to be fair, I made one and we stuck it on the mug. So, um, you know, with you doing it at home, make a couple and, and practice and you'll get better. Yeah, it's so beefy down there, but I don't know if it's a problem. You over here? Mm -hmm. That's amazing <laughs> see what I mean it's a little chunky so it's really soft I'm gonna wait for it to stiffen up and then I'm gonna take a sponge I'm gonna soften see these edges it's a, it's a little hard little blocky and I don't want that so I'm gonna wait for it to solidify just enough because it's very it's very very wet once it stiffens up a bit I'm gonna go ahead and smooth that out I don't think it needs volume can you believe I said that I do think it's too thick, but, um, you know, maybe I'll have to just give it away. Some, some person will have to suffer with this mug. All right, so if you put your handle on and your mug is too soft, the body's too soft, and you're worried about it slumping, um, just take some scrap clay, shape it into a cone, like a carrot shape, and put it up against the handle and that will hold it for you until it stiffens up. So you've made a handle holder. And what you can do is you can actually let these guys dry in the studio so you're not always making one. Um, you can even bisque fire them and have them hanging out and that way you can use it for holding mugs. All right. You're not allowed to order any more pins <laughs> unless you're in the shop. So this marvelous mold that I'm using right now is their new one. It just premiered. It's their V-Petal Ruffle. That's this one here. And this is what it looks like. And I did cut it up. So if you're just joining and you want to get one of these, got to watch the beginning. I cut this. You have to cut that bit off or else you're just going to get a trivet, which is fine. I'm trying not to knock trivets. Trivets would be upset if I am too mean to them. So, yeah. People who love trivets. We're going to do this as a planter, though. So let's see. I want to find my red rib. It's this one. And this happens to be the Marvelous Molds, which uh, Clay's Case Pottery has on sale right now. They've got all kinds of tools on sale for this month. And there's only a couple days left, so check that sale out. But Marvelous Molds are in the sale. Kemper tools are in the sale. You'll have to go see. They have a whole list going. Um, but this one, what number is this? Uh, one. Number one red. So a planter. I think straight up and down cylinder planters are really amazing. Um, you know, they're very simple. And I, I kind of want to keep this this way. But I also want to show you all some text, some volume for our texture. So not today. We're going to put volume in it. So I am just going to start about in the center. Just... And I'm using my rib in a sweeping motion and I'm supporting it on the outside so that I don't get too overzealous with my voluming. 
which has been known to happen. I got to rein myself in. And even though we have this crazy, amazing, deep texture, we are still able to add volume to it and it not crack. And that's because the slab was 3 8 of an inch when I started. And I know people are going to be like, that's too thick. Oh, try it. Go ahead and try it and tell me. When you put your texture in and then you add your volume, you're like, ah, oh, yes, that's why we do this. And it's great. So I'm not really doing anything to the outside. I'm, I'm stretching it from the inside. And that is allowing the texture on the outside to stay. So I'm not doing And I don't know why I'm not using the tools I have in my studio. Goodness me. My banding wheel. All right, watch out. This is how I get into trouble. Because I can volume all day long with this. You see it growing? See how big it's going to get? Oh, it's going to be so great. So if it's going to be a planter, you have to think about drainage if you're going to put real live plants in here. So if you're going to put real plants in here, you might want to put a foot on it or a couple feet. And I do have planter classes and I teach you how to make planters and put feet on them. So check that out. Um, as this is, it would be great to be used as, uh, I mean, this could be a mug. Not going to be a mug. No, no mugs. Why is it always about mugs? Um, <laughs> what? I'm thirsty. <laughs> I need a drink. I need some tea. Put this back in to get my round back. Right? It's beautiful. It's, a it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. You always pull your joining seam apart when you do voluming. All right, Donna. So what you're probably doing is not overlapping enough. Overlap more. So when we bring that seam together and we do our overlap, really overlap. Don't worry about it. I know you think every, and, and I don't mean you just in general, everybody, we all think that you, we overlap too much and then it'll be a big bulky lump there where that seam is. But if you're going to volume, you need to have that extra bit of material there. You need that clay there. So go ahead and make your overlap just a bit fatter, make it a bit bigger. So don't be afraid to overlap a little more than you think you should. And I think what you'll find then is when you're doing your voluming, you don't lose the seam. I sometimes will do my join and I realize as I'm doing it that I'm rolling it up and I realize it's just not enough of an overlap. And if that's the case, then you can't do volume. So then I'm like, well, I guess no volume on this one. And it's okay if that's what you want. But if you want volume, you're going to be sad. And nobody should be sad in pottery. That's, that's the only rule. No sad pottery. Only happy little pots. Look at it. It's so cute. I get very excited sometimes. And it's, it's amazing. This is the thing about pottery is you can be doing it your whole life. And then one little thing. And I've made this shape a million times. Okay, maybe not a million. That's a lot of pots. Um, hundreds, hundreds of times. But, um, you know, sometimes just trying a different texture, changing it up a bit, it, it sparks something, right? And reinvigorates you and gets you going. And I'm just cleaning up this bottom edge a little with the wooden knife here. I'm just kind of spinning it along. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I'll see it close up. Right? Now I can flare out that rim or I can leave it straight. That's always the tough part. My yellow rib, someone was asking, is a number three. A number three yellow and cat. I have a cat, so you know, cat hair gets stuck on everything. Uh, but the good thing about cat hair or dog hair in your studio is it burns out in the kiln. So nobody needs to know, only you. Ah, oh, Sue, you're watching the class. Well, the hurricane's going by. Please be safe. 
please be safe. I hope, uh, you know, I've been thinking about everybody having lived in Virginia and the Carolinas and my dad lived in Florida. Um, you know, I know what it's like. I've been through many hurricanes and I, I think about it every time one's coming. All the people down there. So I'm just going to smooth this out with that red rib. This nice big rim. I'm going to try to not flare it, but I, I always do flare them. All right. If you're using a terracotta pot and little bits of clay get stuck on the outside, just wipe it with a damp sponge and then dry it a bit. Because if you put it wet into your mug or planter or whatever you're making, or if the rim of this is wet at all, it's going to stick and it's going to be really hard to get it off. And it's going to actually tear your clay. And you can test it. See how I'm putting it in? I'm just kind of wiggling it a little bit to see how sticky it is. It's a little sticky. So um, let's put something else on this. I can do something else. I've got some other marvelous molds. I have got this beautiful flower, marvelous molds. Um, 2012, marvelousmolds.com, it says. Let's see. Is that the name of this pattern? I can't read it. No. Food grade silicone. Rosemary. Yes. Rosemary. I think that's the name of it. It's really pretty. Let's do something with it. I'm going to have to take my mug handle holder. Sorry, mug. You're going to have to You're going to have to hold yourself up, mug handle. I need I need this bit of clay. So I'm just going to roll this out a bit thinning it down. So when we're using these, I'm going to make basically an applique and attach it to the front because if anybody says you got too much texture, you look them straight in the eye and you say no. And you just put more texture on because that's what we're going to do. There's no such thing. I mean, it's, it's all personal preference, but for me, there's never too much. I can always put more, more, more is more. Um, another one that's great, but I'm not going to do it, is this drippy kind of yarn one that I've got. And I'll, if we have time, I'll, I'll put that in clay. Let's see if we have time. Just to show you what it looks like. But, um, oh, we're so close to the end. Arr! All right. For things like this one, I like to do it a little differently. I'm going to actually cut out a bit of clay approximately the size of this. And I'm going to use it more like a sprig mold. So instead of putting these on the clay, because I didn't cut these at all. This is being used exactly as it came out of the package. So we're going to put it on here and then just press it in. And just use your fingers and press it, press it, press it. And what will happen is the edge that we did not cut off is going to leave an indent. And it's going to kind of cut it a little bit. Now you can use a rolling pin if you want. And you can do it the way that I did with the the texture but do you see how this look at see it's cutting it for me see right there so you know where your edge is tears it you can just tear it and then we just press it in you can pick it up and use your thumbs you can flip it over and see how it's coming along because they are slightly transparent so you can see in there um, again if it's fresh new and you haven't used it before your clay might stick to it so put some cornstarch in there let's flip it over this one I haven't used in a while, so we might end up with a little sticky time. So we're going to see if we can pop it out. Just... Oh, here it comes. I haven't used this one in a couple of years. It's just been sitting in the drawer, so lonely, waiting for me. Here in the overhead. Look at that. That's terrible. Said no one ever. <laughs> Let's put it on. No. The next broadcast starts at 16 at 15. We were a few minutes late. Um, I'm going to do this. And my producer is going to have to just sit tight and live with it. Right? We're going here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to keep it upwards. 
So I'm just going to lightly tamp it on to begin with. Oh my goodness gracious. And then I'm going to peel it off so that I left behind a tiny bit of the slip so I know where to slip and score. Right? And then if you need to slip and score this again, I'm going to try to line it. That's the tricky part, lining it back up again. Ready? Make sure your hands are clean and dry. And you're just going to gently roll this on. If you get any clay or wetness on your hands while you're doing this, stop, wipe your hands again, and come back. Because that clay can smear and ruin your amazing texture. Look at this. So this one was called, I believe, Rosemary. Right? And it's... It's gorgeous. And you don't have to put it on a mug with all the texture on it, but why not? You could put it on um, plain, you know? All right, so I messed up my circle. That's okay. I messed up my perfectly round rim. No big deal. Put your little rounder pot back in and you fixed it. All right, ready? Oh, you're zoomed in. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Where does one texture start and another end? Who knows? That's pretty fabulous, right? Um, okay, we're out of time, but I do want to quickly show you. I love, I love this, and I like to put it around the rims of sweater mugs. And I don't, um, I have one somewhere of my own that I kept, but I don't, I, I don't actually know where that is right now. I mean, I kept it for myself. I think I kept it, but then again, I could have given it away. That sort of happened. Put some feet on. Yeah, so I can still put feet on. And actually, I think if I was going to put feet on this one, which I might still do, is I would wait until it stiffens up a little bit so that I can flip it over without the shape becoming distorted. I didn't put enough clay in this to do the whole thing, but I really just want to give you guys the idea of it. because it's a really fun one. All right, so it's knit, right? And it's messy because I did it super quick. Uh, but look, it's very cute on the rim of a, of a mug. So like, you know, this will give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you're not in a hurry, right? And you stick it on. It's super cute. <laughs> All right, that's what we did. So we used the Marvelous Molds. Um, just another great texture option. You know, you know I love rolling pins. I mean, obviously. And I love stamps, and I love lots of things out there. And I love carving, and, and I love painting on the surface and drawing on the surface. And I love just glaze. Uh, but there's so many other things out there in the world, and I, I'm always wanting to share with you and share ideas and how you can use things. You know, um, one of the Marvelous Molds I actually use to make napkin rings. This particular one right here, you just put your clay in the whole thing and roll it up and you've made a napkin ring. It's perfect for that. Uh, it's, uh, let's see. I don't know what the name of this one is. You guys are going to have to just go online and look at them all. Uh, I think I did a broadcast with this at one point. So, anyhow, there we have it. The V-Petal mug with textured handle that I wasn't going to make, but I did. And the V petal planter with a little applique on top of it. All right, premium members, you guys are getting this next. That's right, Halloween votives. And the template is available for you all to download and print out. We even did it as a Cricut file too. So we got them as both ways for you. Do it on paper or use your Cricut or Silhouette to cut it out for you on craft foam. But we're going to make these next, and we're doing the giveaway where I'm giving away some of my own personal stash of Marvelous Molds and the brand new Pinstripe Pumpkin Rolling Pin. So we're going to give that away um, in a hot minute. See y'all at 6.15. Bye, everybody.